There's part of it is creating your why, creating what's your purpose. And part of it is realizing, even if I don't have that, even if I'm still searching for that, I don't need to wait for it to, to live. <clears throat> I'm just gonna go ahead and say right now, uh, because I identify so strongly with Joe, we're gonna get a lot of this as we go along. Hello, and welcome to Cinema Therapy. I am Alan Seawright, professional filmmaker, and I need therapy. I'm Jonathan Decker, licensed therapist, and I love movies. What do we got today, brother? I'm gonna have you react to a film. I love therapist reacts, these are fun. This is probably our most requested film ever. Yes. It is Soul. Okay. Pixar's I, Soul. I'm a, sorry, I thought it was Troll 2, but I'm super excited. That's number two. That's yeah. our second most requested <laughs> video ever. Everyone loves Troll 2. Oh, so this is a, this is fantastic. It's a really great film. Uh, so I watched it Christmas Day when it came out. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I was tired because Christmas with kids is like it's a lot. Yeah, and uh, I liked it. Yeah, I liked it a lot. And then I rewatched it a couple days ago to prep for this, and it destroyed me. <laughs> I am a husk of a man now. I am ruined. Before he was just a husky man. If you haven't seen this film, you should watch it. Pause this and watch the thing, and then come back. You can watch it on Disney Plus or using our link down there to rent or buy it. We get a little kickback, which will make us feel nice. So I had a similar experience. To me, it was overhyped. I watched it once. And I'm like, oh crap! They all want us to do this video, and I, I don't love it. I wasn't blown away by it, right. and and then uh, so I actually went back and rewatched it, and it actually really landed for me the second time. So yeah. kind of a similar experience. There's there's actually a lot. Some interesting character stuff. There's relationships. Yeah. All over the place. And and life purpose, which is life a, purpose, which is a huge thing. My life was meaningless. Big reason people come to therapy. Yeah. Because what is my spark? What is my spark? What is my purpose? Mm -hmm. Are they the same thing? Spoiler. We'll find out. Character of Joe, played by Jamie Fox. Yeah. It is Joe, right? It is Joe. Yeah. Hands and piano, you know, animated by the animators of Pixar, but they filmed, um, they filmed John Baptiste playing oh, cool. all this stuff from like 30 different camera angles so that they could get every little nuance of the hands on the keys and everything. And then the animators interpreted it. And Joe has gotten himself into the zone and he's flowing. like state. I love that this plays off later in the story. I mean, it's it's a great little how everything else fades away. Yeah. You don't see the stage, you don't see anybody else. No, it's a beautiful visualization of it right now, and then it plays such a huge role in the story later. Then you come out of the zone and, oop. <laughs> uh, sorry, I... Zoned out a little back there. <laughs> Joe Gardner, where have you been? I've been uh, teaching middle school band. Uh, uh, th th but on the weekends, I... You got a suit? I... Uh... Get a suit, Teach. A good suit. Back here tonight, first show's at 9, sound check's at 7. We'll see how you do. I <clears throat> think one of our greatest fears is a life unlived, right? Oh, absolutely. A life un uh, unfulfilled, not doing... Not leaving your mark, not making a difference, not actually living, like just kind of going through the motions. And he's done that his entire life. And the cruel irony is the day, he says, I can't die, not when my life has just begun. Just begun. And he's halfway through his life. Yeah. You know? He just hasn't recognized it yet. Yeah. And, and as a middle-aged man with many unfulfilled professional dreams, I don't identify with that at all. I don't know why I'm laughing. I guess I'm laughing because you said it was such a roguish charm. <laughs> Stop! What are you doing? <laughs> oh, we broke him. Hey, huh? hey, hey. Huh? Here, oh. Here. Is that, ooh. There you go. Nice. Come on back. There. What is this? So we got birthday cake popcorn because the souls, birthday cake popcorn. the souls in soul are waiting they're to be born. They're gonna have a birthday. Then they're gonna have a birthday. And, and so hopefully, their birthday will be as delicious as this. This is very good. Yeah. Lisa's passion for popcorn. Mm -hmm. Lisa's passion for popcorn.com. Use the 10 code. 10% discount. Yep. The code beneath C Therapy. Use that at checkout for a 10% discount. We'll deliver to your door in the United States. If you are not in the United States, our sincerest apologies, but we love you. Go out and get yourself something nice.
Yeah. And so I look at 22 and I think of how many of us feel inadequate to tackle our dreams. And so we just, we hold off or we, we refuse to have dreams. Right. And we, we refuse to, to even explore what we could be passionate about because there's this ingrained belief that I'm going to fail at it. Yeah. Well, and if you refuse to have a dream, then you can't fail at it. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like if I, if I feel like I'm going to fall anyway, then I'm not going to climb up the ladder because it's going to hurt more the higher up I am and I'm yep. destined to fail. And that's a limiting belief and it's not based in reality. I don't care who you are. We all have limitations. We all have weaknesses. But the belief that I am destined to fail is a perception. Yeah. It's that's a per- not true. Yeah, it's not true. Um, and some of you are sitting there at home going, Mm-mm, it is true. It, it, I'm the exception. It's, it's true for me. It's not. You're not special. It's not. Well, you're you just are. a sack of meat like the rest of us. Wow. But to me, you're a special meat sack. <laughs> <laughs> Worthy of love and adoration. Finely you, spiced. You adorable like meat sack. Like a sausage. Sack. You adorable meat sack, you. I already know everything about Earth, and it's not worth the trouble. Come on, don't you want to fill out your path? Uh, you know, I'm comfortable up here. I have my routine. I float in mist. I do my Sudoku puzzles. Sudoku and then like once puzzles. a week, I come to one of these you seminars. It's not great, but I know what to expect. Look, look kid. I, you know what I'm this not, reminds me of? We can pause really fast. I'm not yeah. beyond. So when we were in college, you'll remember I worked at a group home for at-risk teenagers. I do remember that. And I wasn't a therapist yet. I was a mentor. This is so much like mentorship of teenagers. <laughs> so much. You know, I'm older. That. I've got more experience. We're trying to help you learn how to... You do your homework, get an education, how to get a job, how to do this and how to do that. And so often there's just, there's apathy and bad attitude that is really masking a, a fear. Sure. Right? And usually when people have bad attitudes or when people are arrogant, they're, they're masking an insecurity. Right? They don't want you to see it. So they're standoffish and try and push you away. But 22 is really, she acts like she doesn't care about going to Earth. Really, she cares deeply about it. She's just worried about it. She's really She's scared. Afraid, yeah. You can't crush a soul here. That's what life on Earth is for. Huh. Very witty. She, she's really scared that it that it won't be worthwhile or that she'll completely bungle her experience. Right. And so it's like, I'm not even going to try. I'm not even a mentor. Not a mentor? Uh, <laughs> reverse psychology. You really are a good shrink, doctor. Carl Jung already tried that. Stop <laughs> talking! My unconscious mind hates you! In a movie with a bunch of really great throwaway jokes, that is, that's the second best one. The best one is the next joke. That is one of the best, like, just set up punchline jokes in any film ever. Prove me wrong. It's so now they've gone into it. his wait, 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 museum of life. Going down. I mean, I, I, Come back when you have something. Sorry, Joe. Sorry, Joe. We're looking for something different. Two, three, four. Hmm. Okay. Pause real quick. One of the things that I love is, you know, we're in this sad state that I identify with all too well as an aspiring artist this and one of the things that I love about this and it's really subtle it's I didn't pick it up the first time I watched the film he's sitting at a table by himself eating pie and it looks so sad and pathetic in this sweep of everything that we're seeing do you remember when we come back to it at the end of the film the pie the pie Mm -mm. it's really quick and you don't really notice it and when he is remembering life on earth He's sitting there eating the pie, and it's delicious. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's just, you know, what is your perspective on life? <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and say right now, uh, because I identify so strongly with Joe, we're going to get a lot of this as we go along. My life was meaningless. I have felt that. Not completely. I mean, I have kids and a wife. No, 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 no. No, I will not accept this. Kid, give me that badge. I love the world that we're living in now where my kids can watch Soul or they can watch Coco or they can watch... And they can watch a film and see a bunch of characters who look nothing like them and see themselves in those characters. Yeah. 
Or Black Panther. Or Black Panther, yeah. I, I love that we live in a world where my kid, lo um, my son wants to be Black Panther. Or, you know, where... My or, son wants to be Spider-Man? Miles Morales. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't, yeah. He doesn't give two craps about Peter Parker. <laughs> he just wants to be Miles Morales. It's not just about representation of people who look like you. For We talk a lot about minorities and what representation means to them. As a majority, representation of minorities matters for me as a parent yep. because kids don't, my kids don't see people of color, people of a different culture as the side characters in the story yeah. and the side characters in the world. In, in my life, right? Yeah. The right. world is my story and they're the bit parts in it. Representation matters for minorities, but it also matters for it helping matters the majority to be more open-minded. Yeah, it matters for everybody. is this place? You know how when you humans are really into something and it feels like you're in another place? It feels like you're in the zone, right? Yeah. Well, this is the zone. It's the space between the physical and spiritual. Wait a minute. I was here today doing my audition. This must be where musicians come when they get into a flow. Not just musicians. Watch this. Oh, Rome, oh, Rome, wherefore art thou? Line! Line. <laughs> Oops. Check this out. I have been messing with this team for decades. <laughs> and the Knicks lose another one. <laughs> all right, all right. Where's this guy? You know, oh, man. I gotta get That's back so to my game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, Knicks fans. That was real. Uh, <laughs> Knicks fans realize it more than oh, anybody. They know, they know more than anybody. Uh, <laughs> the Knicks losing. <laughs> oh, he's a cat now. Hey, Mr. Yes. G, it's Curly. Um, I hope you're doing okay. Dorothea freaked out when she saw you, and she called this other guy, Robert. He's got the gig now. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. Uh, look, honestly, your class was the only reason I went to school at all. Like, I owe you a lot. So, here's the plan. Clean yourself up, put on a killer suit, and get to the club early. I'm going to try and talk to her. Just make sure you show up looking like a million bucks, all right? I hope I see you, man. All right, peace. Oh, I can get the gig back, 22. I need your help. I have a suit. I'm going to need you to try it on, oh, no, and then no, 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 line nope, my hair up nope, a little nope, bit, nope, nope, and nope, I can... Nope. Uh, nope. Uh, no way, no <laughs> Hearing Tina and Faye's voice coming out of that body. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> One of the things that I really wanted to talk about with you in this is it's, it's addressed, and it, you know, hammered home pretty hard at the end of the film that Joe hears, you got to find your spark. Yeah and that's what gives you the pass down to earth, or that's what's said to him, but what he hears is you have to find your purpose. Yeah. And I know my purpose. My purpose is to play piano. We see in this scene, it's, you know, it's, it's delivering a plot point, and this is another thing that Pixar does so fantastically, is they're giving you um, exposition of a plot point, they're explaining what's happening in the story, and subtly telling you so many other things at the same time. Yeah. His purpose in life, the thing that he's best at, is teaching. Honestly, your class was the only reason I went to school at all. Like, I owe you a lot. But he has been so focused on, fixated on this one thing, that he completely missed another thing that if he had just gone, oh, hang on. Yeah. I'm really good at this. Yeah. He could have walked through that museum of his life and felt completely different about it. Look at the difference that I made in that. And that's the flip side of, you know, the conversation about you have your passions for a reason. Yeah. Is we need to be careful because sometimes it's, well, I'm passionate about this, therefore this is what I need to do with my life. Yeah. And how many people want to be professional baseball players or, you know, they want to be a great Hollywood star. And it's like, well, if if that's all I can do and I and I don't succeed, then am I a failure? Yeah. And there is our there are our passions, but there's also what we're good at. Right. And how do we make our mark on the world often is just through the lives we touch. And that's a beautiful thing about the message of this film and also reality is we might think, well, if I'm not good enough to be prima ballerina or I'm not good enough to, you know, get this part in the school play or if I'm not good enough to get this job, then I suck. My life was meaningless. My life was meaningless. But the fact is you don't have to be a roaring public success to be fulfilled. In fact, a lot of people who are very successful are incredibly unfulfilled. Which drives them to seek more and more success, right? Yeah. The barber 
expl- you know, he says, this is not my purpose. I was supposed to be a veterinarian. Whoa, whoa, slow your road there, Joe. I'm happy as a clam, my man. Not everyone can be Charles Drew inventing blood transfusions. And you know what? I have a great time here. Yeah. It's fine. There is fulfillment in living a life of integrity and goodness. Yeah. Period. No matter what you're doing. My mom doesn't know anything about the gig, and I want to keep it that way, okay? Right, because she thinks you're a failure. What? I didn't say that. You did. Up here. Uh, I love how they illustrate in this movie, you know, just with that simple line of, well, I didn't say that. No, yeah, you did. It's up here. Yeah. She has access to his brain, and his brain is telling things that aren't true, and he knows it, yeah. but he doesn't feel it yet. But she doesn't want him playing with the jazz band. She's like, grow up, get a job, get stability. And he's like, this is my dream. And at the beginning, he shrinks back from that confrontation. He, he won't have the confrontation at all. He just avoids it. And now, as a cat, he's telling 22 in his body what to tell his mom. Because it yeah. seems like no matter what I do, you disapprove. Look, I know you love playing. Then how come except for church, you're the happiest when I don't? I finally land the gig of my life and... You're upset. You didn't see how tough being a musician was on your father. I don't want to see you struggle like that. So dad could pursue his dreams and I can't? Your father had me. Most times, this shop is what paid the bills. So when I'm gone, who's going to pay yours? Music is all I think about. From the moment I wake up in the morning to the moment I fall asleep at night. You can't eat dreams for breakfast, Joey. Then I don't want to eat. This isn't about my career, Mom. It's... It's my reason for living, and I know Dad felt the same way. I'm just afraid that if I died today, that my life would have amounted to nothing. This is what I go to sleep at night, every night, thinking about. And I know it's not true. Let's make this work instead. That's my dad's suit. Lulu, Melba, bring your good scissors in here. We got work to do. Thank you, Uh, Mom. Ray would have been so proud of you, baby. Like I've always been. When I was 12 years old, I waited for months, I read every magazine. This was the first time I knew that there were people who made movies. And I went to see Jurassic Park. And it blew my mind. I was scared and excited and I laughed. And I knew who Steven Spielberg was and I knew that he had a vision to see dinosaurs come to life, and he made it. It's a dinosaur. Uh And I came home, and I said to my mom, Mom, I know what I want to do. I want to make movies like Steven Spielberg. And she said, you can't. There are a million people trying to be Steven Spielberg, and there's only one. And you can't do it. And what she was saying is the same thing that Joe Gardner's mom was saying. I don't want to watch you suffer. I won't be able to protect you. But what 12-year-old me heard was, you're never going to be talented enough to do that. And because of that, I didn't make a movie until you made me (laughs) when I was 24 years old. I wasted 12 years of my life. Yeah, It's tough because on the one hand, she was right. I'm not Steven Spielberg. Um, But on the other hand, you know, what I needed and what I still need is a parent who is as excited for me to be doing what I love as I am to be doing what I love. Um, this is the heart of the movie and the, the intellectual core of the movie is a bunch of you know the other stuff that we've talked about. We'll talk about it a little bit more. 
But the heart of the movie is I need support and love in my purpose. Yeah. Even if I, maybe I kind of got my purpose wrong a little bit. <laughs> I look at Joe Gardner and his aspiration to be a jazz musician, um, but and, and that's his passion. But his uh, his talent is in teaching. Yeah. I mean, I don't think what we're doing here is your sole purpose for being on this planet or your, the sole mark you can make on the world. No, definitely not. But I do know that what we do on the show, and specifically you doing what you've been doing this episode and so many episodes, it's been healing for so many of you that he is vulnerable and raw and real. And you are making a difference and making a mark yeah. by showing people that it's okay to feel that it's okay to own imperfection, that it's okay to be afraid, and that it's a, to step into your power as a healer. There's clearly a drive in you to do something that lifts and to do something that helps because life sucks, and <laughs> life is hard, and to, to give something that pulls people up and, and helps people out, and you're doing it now. I'm not saying this is it, you've arrived. Hey, here we are. <laughs> From where I sit, and you may feel differently from where I sit, if that were true, it's still pretty awesome because you're making a huge mark. Well, thanks, man. And thank you all for crying with me. <laughs> Seriously, I say that kind of jokingly, but kind of not. Thank you. I always said it was dumb, but I mean, just look at what I found. Your mom sewed your suit from this cute spool. When I was nervous, Des gave me this. A guy on the subway yelled at me. It was scary. But I kind of liked that too. <sighs> Truth is, I've always worried that maybe there's something wrong with me. You know? Maybe I'm not good enough for a living. But then you showed me about purpose and passion, and maybe skywatching can be my spark. Or walking. I'm really good at walking. Those really on <laughs> purpose is 22. That's just regular old living. But hey, when you get back to the U that's seminar, you can give it an living. honest try. No, but I've been at the U seminar for thousands. I mean, it largely years. speaks for itself. That's I have to ask. the How most beautiful did thing. Did you do it? Get that earth pass to change. Oh, it's just being you alive. know what? I, I just let her walk a mile in my shoes, you could say. Well, it worked. <laughs> yeah. Well, you should probably get going to the great beyond. Hey, um, we never found out what 22's purpose was. Excuse me? You know, her, uh, spark, her purpose. Was it music, biology, walking? <laughs> we don't assign purposes. Where did you get that idea? Because I have piano. It's what I was born to do. That's my spark. A spark isn't a soul's purpose. Oh, you mentors and your passions, your purposes, your meanings of life. So basic. <laughs> no, no, it... <laughs> It is music. My spark is music. I, I know it is. I have always been a very purpose-driven person. I have a mission, right? I have a, I have a thing that I am supposed to do on this planet. The meaning of life, when you're searching for a meaning of life, the meaning of life is life. Be good at a thing. Be bad at a thing. It's all part of it. Yeah. You know? Therapeutically, being grateful for every day of life, being grateful just to be here. Hey, take a look! And like you're saying, even if I even if I feel sad, or even if it's not, it's kind of a meh day, or even if I'm scared or sad, I'm experiencing it. Wow. Frankly, people will say, don't spend, don't waste so much time watching movies and TV, go live your life, and I'm like, but I love it. Waste some time watching movies yeah, and TV. Yeah, we say watch movies for a reason, it's good for the soul. Yep. There's part of it is creating your why, creating what's your purpose. And part of it is realizing, even if I don't have that, even if I'm still searching for that, I don't need to wait for it to, to live. Yeah. And just, just to, there's so much to enjoy. There's so much to appreciate. There's so much that's been created in art and literature. There's so much from in history to learn from. There's so many foods to try, things to smell, things to see. And even if you're stuck in one place, the whole breadth of human experience and knowledge is available to all of us. We you know we live in yeah. the age of the internet. Like it's all, 
if you have one of these, <laughs> you can, th that's everything. Yeah. It's everything humans have ever done. Yeah, you can pull it up right there. Mm -mm. The purpose of life is to live it. Candidly, my initial pass by soul, I felt it was overhyped. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can go into a movie sometimes after a bunch of people have been talking about it, and it's never gonna be able to measure up to just what everyone's saying. Right. There are times when you revisit a film and instead of watching it through the lens of what you expected or wanted it to be, you watch it through the lens of what it is and you gain a whole new appreciation for it. And I think people are that way, actually. And I think life is that way, you know? Tying back to your mom and tying back to our parents and our family, sometimes we struggle with our kids because this kid is, is not who I thought he, she, or they were gonna be. They're not passionate about the things I think they should be. They're not taking the road I think they should be taking. And we see them kind of the way I saw Soul the first time, which is, oh, this wasn't what I thought it was going to be. How disappointing. But when we start to see life and people, because life is like that as well. Life isn't what I thought it was going to be. How disappointed. We start seeing life and people for what they are. We gain a whole new appreciation. And, you know, I watched it once, and then I watched it a second time, and I really liked it. I mean, I liked it the first time, really liked it the second time, and now just sitting here watching it and talking about it, I'm like, I actually love this film. It's brilliant. Yeah, you know? Yeah. And and like I say, people in life are like that too. We have to just appreciate what is and let go of what we wanted to appreciate what is. So your experience with Soul is the experience of watching Soul. My experience of, with life and people is like my experience watching Soul, yeah. I'd say that's a pretty ringing endorsement for a film. <laughs> Watch movies. Tell them about our socials, Alan. Well, we've got them. They're at therapy <laughs> underscore cinema on Twitter and Instagram. I don't know why I ask you to do it. Because yeah. you're a masochist. <laughs> We're also on Reddit, r slash cinema therapy, where you can, we can Reddit each other. We can read it. Oh my gosh. So until next time, Julia Child wasn't successful until she was 49. And the Knicks lose again. And... and Watch, Watch movies. movies. Awesome. <laughs> I have such a headache. Yeah. My head is aching. I've hydrate. cried so much today. This was our last of the day, crying all day. I'm, it's, I'm a wreck. Yeah. I'm gonna go home and just like curl up in a ball. Drink some chamomile tea.